my route to the CA wasn't a traditional one. I, I started off as a secretary for seven years first. And at that point of my life, I just thought that I could do better than this. Uh, I would like to try and do something more, more with my career. I've been very privileged to have qualified as a chartered accountant and my qualification was as a result of the support that I received from a whole range of people, those people who exposed me to accounting through career guidance, uh, those people who exposed me to the opportunities that chartered accountancy actually presents, uh, to the funders who helped me along the way. And today I would want to give back to young people who also have the potential and, the, and really create opportunities for them to become chartered accountants. And being a chartered accountant has been very important to me because uh, it has allowed me to really participate in the South African economy in a real sense. It has allowed me to share my own experiences with the younger people coming up and hopefully to act as a role model to a lot more of, of the young people who are coming up who realize that it is possible. We need to get people that really have uh, real potential to be able to qualify because while you need a lot more CAs to come through, the one thing that we guard jealously is the quality of our CAs. So we're not just going to say, well, we need more CAs, let's uh, um, uh, adjust the standards uh, to, to get people through. If anything, because of the complex nature of business, our standards uh, have to keep up with the complexity of the real world. Therefore, it, it, at, at, at the very least, the standards will get even, even tougher. The president of SAICA never stops reminding the big four companies that uh, all of their IFR desks around the world are headed by South Africans. This must say something of the learning opportunities of the leading edge and I think that, that, that one of the issues that, that does arise in South Africa is that in aggregate terms uh, uh, people reach uh, uh, fairly high stations when they're considerably lower than, than in the more mature economies. I must admit I've been a little sceptical about the, gen, the Generation Y thing but I think there are some real truths in there and one of those is that they are intolerant of poor leadership. So, you know, I'm someone who's on the cusp of the baby boomer and Gen X and, you know, we kind of, we tended to do what we were told. Um, but I really do see it now that, you know, um, the people you're getting now, it's simply intolerant of, of poor leadership. The soft management skills are absolutely crucial for the financial manager in business because we've got to get the numbers right using integrity and objectivity and so on. But once we've got those right numbers, we've got to communicate them and influence people with them and speak to line managers and negotiate with them. And I, I think that those behavioral aspects, those soft skills will help uh, the finance manager to get that message across. An advisor needs to be able to say no if that is what the advisor thinks, as opposed to well, I'll say no, but if you lean on me enough, maybe you can turn me into a yes, because that's not very useful advice. You've got to be able to give the advice without fear or favour, and if you get fired for it, well, so be it. That's tough. <laughs>